You probably don't think too hard about movie logos when they flash up on the screen as the film starts. However, many logos are as recognizable as the movie they showcase. Plus, they always have more to them than meets the eye. Let's lift the lid on some logos. Here are our top 10 movie logos and their true hidden meanings. Amazing! Number 10. Finding Nemo and Finding Dory Pixar movies are known for their innovative designs and attention to detail, as much as they are for their stories and songs. Their movies are always consistently branded with logos that convey the style of the film and tell the viewer what kind of movie they're about to watch. The beauty of 2003's Finding Nemo logo is its simplicity. It uses simple block text with a watery shimmer to it. The underline that cuts into the text signifies a wave. You know just by looking at the logo, you're about to go on a trip to the ocean. Now look again at the O. That's right, there's a fish in it. You've just found Nemo. For the 2016 sequel, Finding Dory, Pixar repeated the same technique with the fish in the letter O, the shimmer, and the wave, ensuring consistency between the two films. It tells the viewer, if you liked Finding Nemo, you'll like Finding Dory just as much. Number 9. Jurassic Park the iconic logo for Steven Spielberg's series of dinosaur blockbusters was originally developed from the original book. Book jacket designer Chip Kidd came up with the idea of the T-Rex in silhouette frozen in pursuit of its prey. In 1993, when the book became a movie, graphic designer Sandy Carolla took Kidd's idea and ran with it, making one of the most distinctive movie logos of all time. Taking the original dinosaur shadow, he added some jungle at the bottom to add some scale and make the T-Rex look extra large and scary. He then incorporated the picture into something that resembled an actual sign for a theme park, with a wooden effect on the lettering and a contrasting yellow and red color scheme. The other films in the series used the same logo, but made subtle changes. 2001's Jurassic Park 3 logo featured a Spinosaurus instead of a T-Rex. Then, for the 2015 reboot Jurassic World, they went for a monochrome silver look. Number 8. A Nightmare on Elm Street Designers in the horror genre of movies have always put a lot of effort into their logos. There are a few conventions. The color red is popular. The lettering is often a maniacal scrawl or gothic if the movie is historical horror. A Nightmare on Elm Street was the archetypal 1980s horror. It made Freddy Krueger a household name and led to a staggering eight sequels. The logo from the 1984 original stands out. It was created by Dan Perry who also designed the crawling text during the opening sequence of Star Wars. The blood red leaves you in no doubt what you're in for, if you watch the film. However, the lettering of Nightmare is arranged to look like a street full of buildings. The altering shade of the red and the irregular shape of the letters is designed to look like flames. The street is on fire, but why? You can find out by watching it, but you may struggle to sleep afterwards. Number 7. Batman the 1989 Batman movie is credited with kickstarting the comic book movie industry, which evolved through the 90s into the all-conquering behemoth we know today. It was always going to be a successful movie. Directed by Tim Burton, starring Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton. What most people remember from that movie is the logo, the shining gold outline around the black bat symbol, which adorned posters, album covers, t-shirts, you name it. The logo was designed by the film's production designer, Anton Furst, under instruction to make it as different from the campy 1960s Batman logo as possible. He went for flamboyant curves to the Batwing, with razor-sharp points. The gold around the symbol shimmered to signify Bruce Wayne's riches. The logo was tested on teaser posters. The only text on the posters was a date. It made people stop in their tracks, wondering what this strange shape was and why it was there. All was eventually revealed, and we're still seeing that logo more than 25 years later. Number 6. The Godfather one of the most critically acclaimed films of all time, and the spawner of a million mealy mouth Marlon Brando impressions, The Godfather has an instantly recognizable logo. It was designed by S. Neil Fujita, who previously designed the covers of jazz albums, such as Roundabout Midnight by Miles Davis. Fujita went with heavy gothic lettering, usually gold, to signify wealth. The top of the G is extended to highlight the first three letters, God. The head of the Mafia family wasn't just to be respected, he was to be worshipped and obeyed. Over the second part of the word, Fajita placed a hand holding an X-shaped control bar with puppeteer strings attached. This signifies that the Godfather has control over everything that happens around him, manipulating people like puppets, playing out his own story. 
It's a simple yet unforgettable logo, and is still seen today on all kinds of merchandise. Number 5. Back to the Future The Back to the Future series of movies are full of hidden touches, which have been analyzed by movie enthusiasts ever since the movie first came out. The instantly recognizable logo is no different. It's even been referenced by Apple. Here's why. The lettering is slanted in opposite directions, so back moves backwards, while to the future is moving forwards. The arrow signifies Doc Brown's DeLorean moving backwards in time. In fact, in the title sequence of the first movie, it's animated moving backwards on the screen. The orange to yellow gradient across the lettering symbolizes the fire that erupts as Marty McFly travels back and forward through time. However, we almost never got to see this iconic logo. The head of Universal Studios thought the word future would turn audiences off the movie. He thought it should be called Spaceman from Pluto. That would have been a different logo altogether. Number 4. Home Alone The definitive family Christmas movie, Home Alone has delighted audiences since it was released in 1990. It's a simple yet memorable story. You could say the same for the logo. It's the word HOME in block capitals, tightly packed together, signifying the tightness of the family unit. Then a simple picture of a house, but with one light on. This signifies the one person who is alone in the house, Kevin McAllister. The word alone is next. Again, letters tightly packed together. But why is the E in lowercase? Again, this symbolizes Kevin, the smallest of the McAllister family, not quite like the others, isolated. This is a logo that makes more sense once you've watched the movie, rather than one that tells you what's going to happen. Home Alone was massively successful, spawning three sequels, all using this logo. Number 3. Star Wars As well as being probably the most famous movie franchise of all time, Star Wars pioneered brand extensions and merchandising for movies. For that, they needed an effective logo, and they certainly got one, courtesy of designer Susie Rice. Let's ignore the first logo where it was called the Star Wars. Like Facebook many years afterwards, they soon decided against using the definite article. Director George Lucas instructed Susie Rice to come up with a logo that was very fascist and very intimidating. She studied the typefaces used in German history and came up with a modified version of Helvetica Black, which formed the basis of the logo. George Lucas asked for the S's to extend into the next letter, so they were more distinctive and easy to read. There we have the logo that would grace everything from movie posters to lunchboxes for the next 40 years and counting. Number 2. Jackass 2002's Jackass the Movie was the cinema version of the MTV hit show, where various lunatics would do stupid and dangerous things to themselves, all in the name of comedy. It also had an iconic logo, an adapted version of the Pirates Jolly Rogers skull and crossbones flag, but with crutches instead of crossbones. This signifies that if you perform stunts like the Jackass cast, you'll end up on crutches a lot of the time. Simple and effective. It was designed by Andy Jenkins, a graphic designer who knew the Jackass director from the BMX and skateboard scene in early 1980s California. Strangely, this logo took on a different meaning in 2009, when three suspected assassins were arrested in Tijuana, Mexico. Inside their vehicle was a box containing 15 black uniforms, all adorned with the Jackass Skull and Crutches logo. It seems that notorious Mexican drug lord Raydel El Maleta's Lopez Uriarte was a fan of Jackass and liked to use the logo to identify his drug shipments and staff members. Before we get to our number one, let's look at some famous logos that didn't make the top 10. It's our honorable mentions. Firstly, Ghostbusters. The world famous logo for the movie was also the logo of the Ghostbusters themselves and adorned their uniforms and car. It's a pretty simple logo, but if you look closely, you'll see that the ghost actually looks scared. This would tell prospective customers that ghosts are more afraid of the Ghostbusters than they are of ghosts. Next, the 007 logo that has been used in the titles of all the James Bond movies since Dr. No in 1962. It was actually designed to be nothing more than a letterhead. Designer Joseph Karoff added a Beretta gun to the edge of the 7, and the rest is history. Karoff was paid $300 for his work. Finally, back to Pixar, here's the logo for their first movie, Toy Story. The beauty of Toy Story is that kids love it, but adults recognize their own childhood in it. This eye-catching logo does that using child-friendly fonts and bright primary colors to make those memories flood back. Number 1. Silence of the Lambs The Silence of the Lambs was a complex, chilling thriller. 
it was packed with hidden meanings, layers, and misdirection. Its logo is exactly the same. The more you look at it, the more you see. The logo is a moth, covering Agent Clarice Starling's mouth. The moth appears to have a human skull on its back. This isn't a special effect, however. It's real. The Death's Head Hawk Moth actually looks like it has a human head on it. What is the special effect is that if you look closely at the skull, it appears to be made up of naked women. If you know your art history, you may know that it's a snippet of Salvador Dali's 1952 photograph in Voluptas Moors, featuring naked women portraying a skull. But what does it mean, and what does it have to do with the movie? The designer is using symbolism to link sex and death, which is a chilling premise for a thriller. The moth refers to a hobby of one of the movie's other characters. Once you've seen the movie, it begins to make sense. That concludes our top 10 movie logos and their true hidden meanings. Which ones did you like the best? Can you think of any more? Leave a comment and let us know. Also, be sure to click that bell icon to never miss a new video. Thanks for watching.